Hey everybody, welcome back to Dude Ranch DIY. My name is Jake, and as you can see, we got about nine inches of snow here yesterday. Um, so today, we are going to be using the Kubota L3901 tractor with the front bucket and my 72 inch rear blade, and we are going to be plowing out the wood yard area and the wood yard road. Uh, my father is on his way up here to pick up an IBC tote full of firewood for his wood stove back at his house. Um, so we're just gonna try and tidy things up a little bit back here, um, dig out the IBC totes that it'll make it easier to load. And uh, we're gonna be playing around with just snow removal in general, but um, really using this rear blade on the tractor for basically like the second time. Yesterday I used it on our driveway a little bit to uh, you know just clear that out before it all froze up. I got home late from snow plowing um, at my full-time job. So I wasn't able to make a video because it was pretty dark. But today we got plenty of sunshine and uh, we're going to be futzing around with the tractor, the bucket, and the rear blade. Stick around. So yeah, this is my setup here. I got the bucket, Kubota L3901 tractor. And I picked up last year this used uh, Woods. It's a 72-inch rear blade. Um, now, as I mentioned, I kind of messed around with it a little bit yesterday on the gravel, but it didn't, you know, I, it worked all right, but I think it's going to work much better on the asphalt millings back here because they're compacted down and so much harder than the loose gravel driveway. Um, so basically, I have the tractor all the way back in the back corner here, and um, I'm going to be trying to pull the snow away, like pushing it towards the right, away from the splitter, away from the IBC totes, and we're going to go all the way down the road, and then hopefully I can kind of make like a windrow, and then we'll use the bucket to kind of scoop it up and push it off to the side. So that's the plan. Again, very, very limited, minimal experience using one of these rear blades. So uh, along the way, we might be making some adjustments, and if you guys have any feedback, please feel free to uh, give me some advice down in the comments section.
Well, okay guys, as you can see, that really did not take much time at all. I think this has been like total, maybe like 20 minutes. Um, the rear blade did a much better job down here in the wood yard with the harder packed asphalt millings. As you can see, it barely, you know, there were just a couple spots where I think it was mostly like chunks that came up. Um, this is what I did yesterday, but um, it did a great job between the rear blade and the bucket. Um, now I'm just kind of futzing around, getting, scraping it down as far as I can. That way uh, it'll melt a little bit quicker. But um, yeah, I just basically, you know, you saw I made a windrow in the middle then use the bucket to kind of scoop it up and push it off to the side here where it's out of the way. Um, this rear blade is working well. One thing I did realize, which I wasn't doing yesterday, is that it's much easier to get it to, you know, float, so to speak, by dropping it down all the way to the ground first and then just raising it up just a hair above, you know, the surface. Yesterday, I was trying to start with it in the up position and lower it down to where it would float, but duh. Like if I drop it all the way down to the bottom, then I can raise it up just a hair and uh, it just kind of barely scrapes the surface here. So that's awesome. Um, the bucket, you know, I've heard horror stories about people using their buckets for snow removal and how, especially on gravel and stuff, it'll just tear up the gravel and you know, all you're doing is pushing gravel around. But I mean, all I really do is drop the bucket down and float. And then I use my, um, bucket level indicator rod over here and just have it so that it's a hair just so that the edge is like a hair above the uh, the surface whether it's the millings or my gravel driveway and I've you know you can see these piles there really is not much asphalt millings in these piles and uh, I'm not going to walk all the way over by the other pile from the driveway but not too much gravel either um, I was doing the bucket all in here yesterday and again, you know, you can see it, it really didn't scrape too much up at all. So all in all, I am pleased. I did order a set of three edge tamers from R2 Manufacturing. Um, I ordered them about 10 days ago and there was like a 10 to 20 day back order on them. Um, they were nice enough to send me a very well-written email this morning. Um, I believe it was the owner stating that you know it's tough times obviously with covid and everything and supply chain issues so um they're hoping that my order will be shipped out at the very latest by the end of this month but um they did say that they're fairly confident that it'll be able to be shipped out even sooner so i've watched a lot of videos on those and i think that just really takes all the the thinking out of it because those edge tamers will help keep the bucket up you know whatever it is a half an inch or whatever um and i can apply all the downforce i want according to the videos that i've seen so we'll see if you know they're even necessary you know with the results like that i've had here without the edge tamers um i don't really know that i i truly need them but um i guess we'll see how they do worst comes to worst i can do a review on them and uh you know see if it's worth having them or not but um yeah so far enjoying moving snow with the Kubota tractor really didn't get to do it much last year um because we didn't have all that much snow so um now we're just going to be waiting for my dad to get here and we will load up the ibc tow to firewood he'll go on his way and i'll continue on with my day okay guys so one of the cool things i've been tr wanting to try with this rear blade is that it's fully reversible, um, so you can use it either driving forward or in reverse. Um, it actually has three sets of adjustment holes on the back side here. So I just set it in reverse. It also tilts and I can offset it, um, but I have, let me grab the camera here. I have this section just right here. Um, you know, it's kind of next to my oil drum. I'm not going to go crazy with getting the snow all in here, but I figured uh, this would be a good spot for me to try and use this thing in reverse and just kind of push this snow up against the IBC totes. I'm going to move that 55 gallon drum out of the way and just kind of clear up this little area. Um, yeah, I know I could use the front end loader, but um, you know, just as I mentioned, I've been eager to try this thing out for like, oh, 
It's been a little over a year that I've had it and I've barely used it. Um, so I figured I might as well put it through its paces today. So we're just gonna try and push all this snow. I have it in the straight uh, blade orientation because it's not that much. It's not like I'm doing a long pull where I need to offset it. Um, so yeah, we're gonna give this a shot. All right, guys well that was only like three passes it was really quick but um as you can see it worked pretty well you'll also notice that i dug up some of the asphalt millings right after i was bragging about how i really didn't dig up all the asphalt millings on the other sections well i figured out why or i know why um and I have Gord over from GP Outdoors to thank for this. I watched all of his videos on using his rear blade on his long concession road and his snowblower on the front, rear blade on the back series. So he has some great uh, input and just instructions on him figuring out how to use it. So I watched all his videos and basically um, the top link is a crucial player in how well this thing works and how well it either digs in or uh, does not dig in. And basically the way I'd been using it all up until this very point was in the driving forward uh, orientation. And now, and I had it adjusted for that. And now that I flipped it around, it basically reverses everything. So the further out you have your top link, um, it, when in the, forward orientation so if the blade was flipped around facing forward um the further you have your top link out the more it kind of like floats over i believe um like the material and the further sucked in you have it you know if you picture it the blade is kind of cupped like my finger like this and the further out you have it it would be kind of tipped back like that and the further in you have it it's going to be more aggressive and kind of tilt down um, and dig in more. So I have it extended out a bit for use driving forward, but as soon as I flip the blade around, um, it then basically makes the blade dig in more once it was, you know, dropped down on the ground. So I think that's why it dug in here. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Obviously a hydraulic top link um, would would make it a whole lot easier. And I believe Gord even has a hydraulic, you know, adjustment to angle it. Um, so that might be, you know, we don't get nearly, we don't get nearly as much snow here in Connecticut as he does up in Canada. So, I mean, there's a point at which how, how, how much money is it worth for me to not have to get off the tractor and pull a pin? And I don't really know if adding a rear remote reservoir to the tractor and buying all the hydraulic top link and angle kit is really worth it in the long run when we really only get maybe three or four uh, decent, you know, over three or four inch snowstorms a year. Um, but definitely something to look into for those of you that do get a lot of snow. Um, and definitely check out GP Outdoors for a much more thorough, in-depth instructional video on how to use the rear blade in a like long driveway uh, type setting, specifically for snow removal.
Well guys, as you can see, uh, we swapped out the rear blade for the big tool rack as some ballast. The uh, big tool rack quick hitch just makes that super, super easy. Back up, drop the rear blade, pick up the big tool rack. Um, and we just loaded up a full IBC tote in my dad's taco over here. Uh, the Tacoma, it squats a bit, but you know, he doesn't do this on a daily basis. It's just what, when you run out of firewood, you come and get another tote, right? Yep. If only I were charging you, you'd be my best customer. That's right. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's going to head home and unload this. And what we've kind of been talking about is how my father doesn't really need or have much of a need anymore for a big bulk stockpile of, uh, of firewood because, right. you know, having these IBC totes and him having the truck and me having the tractor with the pallet forks. And, and um, the wood yard. Well, yeah, and the wood yard, you know, he's up here often enough right. where when he's running low on a, you know, in a tote, he can just come up and I'll load him up with another one. Um, he used to have a pad at the end of the driveway yeah. that what, with it would hold like five, five cords. cords. Yeah. Still and, there and it's empty. Yeah, but mom never really liked looking at it, huh? No. Yeah, so the IBC tote's a little bit more appealing. Right. Um, and it, you know, it makes it easy for me. Uh, we don't have to go down and bring five cords of firewood down to my father's house. Right. Although we, we got to split up the rest of the, the logs know. we have there. Yeah. And then maybe that'll be it. As well, far as ton, yeah, stockpiling. Yeah. 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 So anyway, guys, that was uh, basically my first experience today using the rear blade. Well, second, using the rear blade and the bucket to plow the snow here in the driveway in the wood yard. What'd you think, Dad? How'd yeah. I do? Great. I mean, everything is four wheel drive that you own. Yeah. Well, except for the and, fusion, but it's not coming back yeah, it's here. Not coming back. <laughs> yeah, and you got it down to the point where you're not upsetting the uh, uh, the asphalt millings. Yeah, and it's great. It worked out pretty well. Real good. So yeah, that was the first experience. Worked out pretty well. Can't wait for some more snow to play around in. Um, as I mentioned before, if you're looking for more of like an instructional, really in-depth how-to of using the rear blade for snow removal, definitely check out Gord's channel. It's GP Outdoors. Um, he has a whole series of, you know, these videos on how to properly adjust and set the rear blade for optimal snow removal. But for now, that's going to about wrap up this one. So as always, guys, if you like the videos, give us a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button down below. Questions, comments, or feedback on how I could be using the rear blade better for snow removal, please put them in the comments section. Uh, but for now, that's it. I'm Jake. I'm Bob. And this is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.